I couldn't find my handheld mic, so bear with me. There's a lot of scammy AI art generators out there. In this video, we're going to cover how you can run stable diffusion on your own computer for free using three different image generation apps for your Mac. These apps are surprisingly easy to use and offer a friendly GUI. They utilize hardware acceleration, including the GPU, and even on Apple Silicon, the neural engine. So with practice, you can achieve decent results. I recommend watching this video at about 1.25x and using the chapter marks so you can skip around as you see fit. Just a fair warning, AI image generation does require a pretty beefy computer, otherwise it'll go slow. You've been warned. While editing this video, I almost forgot a very important point. All the software I use is free. There's a lot of paid AI generators on the Mac App Store, and I recommend you avoid those. So let's start with the easiest option, which is Diff Users from Hugging Face, a company that hosts AI models. So search in the App Store, Diff Users, download, and open. Once the app has downloaded, it will have to download the AI models. The models are a one-time download, and once downloaded, you can even run Stable Diffusion without an active internet connection. Show Diff comes with the ability to download other Stable Diffusion models in this menu above. Usually you'll read something describing them as such. Models for Stable Diffusion image generation are mathematical models that use Stable Diffusion processes to generate digital images. These are the data sets. Before we get started with Diff users, let's cover all the features. The text prompt's pretty self-explanatory. You describe the image you would like to see, and it will try its best to generate it. Next, we have Guidance Scale, where the higher the value, the more the image sticks to a given text input. However, it's important to note that saying this to maximum doesn't necessarily mean better results. GetIMG has a pretty good article about a guide to Stable Diffusion's Guidance Scale parameter, and you can see what happens if you jam the values up. For a while, our image results get better, and then they start to taper off. Another important parameter to consider is the step count. Generally speaking, there is a law of diminishing returns when it comes to increasing the number of steps. Again, GetIMG has another great article about the steps parameter, where you can see how the steps affect the quality results of a prompt. This graphic does a good job of showing the law of diminishing returns with the amount of steps. At a certain point, it stops mattering that much. And the last one is our random seed which this is set to negative one, which means it'll always be random each time we hit generate. This is an important tack for AI generation because adjusting this can lead you to get different images, or you can have it stuck on a certain seed if you like the results that you're getting. Let's try a prompt that probably won't induce nightmares. So let's go with cat playing with a ball of yarn. And we will click generate. This will take a bit, I've sped it up so we don't have to wait. Predictably, the results are decent, but not amazing. In usual AI fashion, it looks like this is a polydactyl cat we have here. It could be better, but oh man, it could be much worse. We could try jumping up the steps quite a bit, just to see what happens with our cat playing with yarn. Again, I sped it up, and here's our end result. <laughs> oh no, this is not good. Surprisingly, this is actually a good thing, because we can now use negative prompts to try and improve this image. Let's try deformed limbs, ugly, blurry, JPEG, and I think that's probably good. We can also add a few more prompts. Let's lower the step count a few. Now generate. <laughs> well, at least that's getting warmer. The cat's eyes are a little strange, and I'm not sure what's happening with this like laser beam from the nose to the string. You could probably Photoshop this into looking normal. Also, under the advanced features, we can also switch this to using the GPU and neural engine if you're on Apple Silicon. I am on a M1 Max, I can always switch to this, and it will require a download. The download's quite large, and it will take a while. Supposedly, this will improve our performance. With that, I think I've covered everything I need to cover with Diff users, so now let's move to our next piece of software, Diffusion B you can grab this one at their official website. As always, link is in the description of this video. Click download and we'll skip ahead. And once it's done downloading, go to the DMG, grab that, we'll drag it into our applications. Then we'll double click, launch Diffusion B. Once this application launches, it will need to download a bunch of models and it'll take about eight gigs to install. 
Diffusion B is a little different in its interface. You can add different models. When you add the models, you actually have to download these from a separate source. I don't have any extras downloaded, but you can get these at Hugging Face. Diffusion B is nice because it has a prompt ideas that give you an idea of what you should write in order to get the images you want. So if you click this, you can go here and see a gallery of images. <laughs> what? <laughs> I just kind of got distracted on how specific this one is. This is the exact prompt someone wrote to get this image. I'm kind of hung up on this mushroom tinga burrito scene close up. So let's just copy this prompt and take it back over to Diffusion B. We can choose how many images this outputs. I'm going to choose two and I'm going to choose two because I have 32 gigs of RAM and we'll just start with 25. We'll leave the guidance scale about seven and everything else looks pretty good. I do want to enable negative prompts because those are pretty useful with the latest stable diffusion. Now we click generate. Let's speed up in time. All right, those are pretty good images. That actually looks like something I might actually put in my face. Let's look at it bigger and kind of get a look at it. Yeah, it's not perfect, but man, that's impressive. Now they got an image I like, let's some, do some stuff with it. When you click this menu, you'll see a couple options like image to image and in painting. We'll cover those in a bit. For now, let's upscale it. Compared to generating an image, upscaling goes fast. If you're familiar with AI upscaling, you'll know it has its limitations and you can definitely see it in this image. Things look a little smeary and not quite right. There is only so much upscaling can do and it does a reasonably good job. Let's save this image and I'll speed through me saving it. The next feature is image to image, but we'll need a starting image and preferably a really rough sketch. So I'm going to draw a very simple scene using Pixelmator Pro. And let's draw a very nice little mountain scene. Okay, now that I've actually painted it, let's just export this, save it to the desktop as a PNG. We'll call it Mountain PNG. Go to my desktop and drag it on. Now I'm going to describe this with a prompt. I'm going to try photorealistic, photograph, beautiful spring, Oregon, mountain, Pacific Northwest, lake. Let's see what happens. Well, it wasn't photorealistic, but it started to turn my image into something that looked a lot better. Let's see what happens if I adjust the options a little bit more and put my input strength a little higher. And we'll generate two images this time. Neither of these were huge winners, but let's move on to in-painting. With in-paint selected, we're gonna drag the image we made before of the burrito and bring it back into the program. The jalapeno really sticks out since it doesn't look quite right. Jalapenos just don't look like that. In this mode, we'll paint the areas we want to replace. So let's first adjust the brush size and continue painting over the jalapeno. Let's grab that prompt again that I was using before, paste it in. Now we'll generate and see the results. My in-painting wasn't perfect. It painted in yet more meaty substance. So maybe I didn't like my results. I can always click retry and it'll generate this image again. Now I like that result better because now the sauce is just kind of dripping everywhere. So let's just save this image and call it Mushroom Tinga Burrito 2. Save. Now it's time to use out painting, which is similar to in-painting. We'll just take an image that I've already cropped and bring it in. You'll notice now there's this square and there's these controls here. This is so I can shrink this image down. I'll put it somewhere like so. And this represents the space that we will be rendering to fill in the image. So I'm going to make this so we generate the missing pieces on the left, right, top, and bottom, mostly to the left and right. Before we can go further, we just need to describe our image and then we'll click generate and see what happens. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with my results as it tried to fill in missing details like it connected the branches to a tree and even added in a bit of a rocky outcropping here as well as the moss up front. This looks fairly authentic, but let's push this a little bit different. I'm going to reset this and I'm going to bring in Starry Night. So again, we just need to position everything and I'm going to crop this a little funky. Now to describe it, and let's be a little silly and see what happens. I'm not super confident we're gonna get great results. 
Well, that was not super exciting. And this is a time when adding a negative prompt would be ideal because clearly it's been trained on images that have labels. We could enter in a negative prompt that tries to get rid of this text, but let's keep moving forward. Now it's time for our last app, which is the most complicated, which is Draw Things. I've already downloaded it and downloaded the model, so we don't have to go through that again. Let's open it. Draw Things looks quite a bit different than any of the other applications, and it's a rougher, less polished experience, but it offers some options that just do not exist on the other ones. So let's go through this. First, we have our models, and we can select from quite a few different models, even including a Van Gogh style one, which would probably be more successful than my attempt to make an alien attack on Starry Night. We could download that if we wanted to. Next we have is text image and image to image strength. This is based on if we have an image that we're already working from or if we are starting a new. Right now we're gonna do text to image at 100% because we're just gonna use this default prompt that it came with and generate an image. The next thing to be aware of is our image size. This is one of the cool things about this is we can generate larger images than the other applications. Then we even have our options of upscalers. There's some pretty nice upscalers here. We're just going to go with X2 because X4 gives you four times the image size, but not necessarily worth that quality. Upscaling takes a lot less time than rendering a new larger image. And then we have a control over steps. I'm going to go pretty high because I want this to be a high quality image. Text guidance. This is again how literal we're making it from the prompt. I'm going to leave this in the middle. And then our next exciting one is Sampler. Samplers are basically rendering engines when it comes to AI generation. I know that's not 100% accurate, but that's the best analog. I have linked in the description an entire article on stable diffusion art for people to read. That's pretty interesting. Uh, some nice visuals that help you along. Again, covering some of the topics you saw before, but the big thing is as the samplers overview, and it goes deep including all kinds of fun graphs and data points to look at. And it even includes a whole bunch of example renders from all the different samplers, including the ones that are found in Draw Things. So this is a good article to check out if you want to find out more about samplers. I mostly just leave it at this default. Next, we have batch size, which is how many images we will output at once. And then we have just a few other things that you can read about more on your own time. So let's just get to this and click generate. Let's do this with two images. Here's our results and they're just a little off. Now we can finally use the image to image. We'll leave it at 70%. That's a good amount of weight between the text versus the old image. Let's adjust our prompt and generate again. The results again are a bit nightmare inducing. It's getting a little warmer and we could continue to try and refine this and get it to a usable state. But let's move on. In painting and out painting is not as intuitive as some of the other applications out there. So let's go over this. I've already generated an image using the default prompt. I'm not crazy about either of these, but let's go with that second one. Before we go further, we're gonna switch our model to in painting. The in-painting model can perform in and out painting. In order to have an area to paint in, we're going to switch the resolution to larger than the image. This is a square image, so let's make it three by two. Using the hand tool, I will move the image over to the right. And let's generate the image to see our results. The results are very good, except for we can see the stitching line running down the image. Let's try and use the erase tool and regenerate that line again. Notably, this UI is very flaky, and sometimes the eraser tool just doesn't work when you click on it. I don't know why. If you notice, there's some other tools like the selection tool, and I cannot get this thing to work for the life of me. All right, now let's generate the image. Our end result still has some problems, but that's just the way these things go. Now for our final trick, working with some existing images to generate new ones. For this next example, let's take the Mona Lisa and try and make her look like she was drawn by a animator. I've written up my prompt and I have my strength set to about 76%. The results are just pretty okay. I mean, looking at these, let's just select the one that seems the least bad. I think this particular image right here will do, so let's use it and alter our prompt so we'll do it in the style of Monet. 
I'm adjusting the strength so it will look more like this image. It is always fun to go through your results and these ones are just okay. This last one I kind of like even if she looks unhappy about whatever's happening here. I almost didn't put this last one in but it's such an impressive demo of stable diffusion. We are going to use the anime model, the waifu diffusion. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I didn't name this thing. We are going to use it to generate anime characters based off the Mona Lisa. You may notice that I have a pretty high step count and I found it really helps with this model. The results are pretty damn impressive even if they all don't really look like the Mona Lisa, but they do capture the pose to some degree. There's quite a bit of settings that I didn't even touch on in this video for you to explore, and a bunch more model sets. These just happen to be the ones that I felt were the most important for you to get started using Stable Diffusion on your Mac. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.